Hello rail fans, and welcome to another French Fried Trains Minecraft Locomotive tutorial. Today, we're going to be building this Brightline SCB-40 Charger Locomotive. So let's get right into the build here. We're going to start with the rear end of the locomotive, and we're going to take deep slate brick stairs and get three of them coming across the bottom middle, pointed backwards. Then above it, we're gonna do two rows of three deep slate brick blocks. And on the second and third layer on the outside edge, two more stairs in a column facing backwards. Then we'll turn around here with a dark oak stair for the coupler and get it stacked up to the middle second block. Delete the ones we use for placement. Under it, put a dark oak fence gate and also a dark oak fence gate on either side of the coupler. Then we're gonna come in front of it here and we're gonna take out a deep slate tile wall. We're gonna skip one block forward and make a row of five walls coming across. And then another row of five directly in front of it. Next, we'll do our rear wheels. So we're gonna skip to the third block forward from this wall and we're gonna get a netherite on each rail with an end rod axle. Then we're going to put three netherite up the middle in front of it and in front of that another set of netherite wheels on each rail with an end rod axle. Then we'll take deep slate tile stairs upside down facing forward on each side here and upside down facing backward on each side here. Then in the middle on the bottom we put a deep slate tile slab on each side. Then we're going to take out dark oak fence gates, open them into the ends of the wheels here and also into the ends of the wheels on this side here. After that, we're gonna come up to the second layer here, starting at the back, and we're gonna fill the top middle three on the second layer with deep slate brick blocks coming up over this truck. We'll stop above where the fence gates are. In front of this on the bottom middle, three deep slate brick blocks coming forward up the middle. Then upside down, outward facing, deep slate brick stairs on each side of this row of blocks. Then a three by three of deep slate brick blocks up here. And then on the second layer on the side, we're gonna put a brewing stand, a warp sign, and a player head. We'll do the same thing over here. So a brewing stand, a warp sign, and a player head. Then in front of this here, we're going to put a temporary block right here and we need to get upside down backward facing deep slate brick stairs in a row five wide right here. Then we're going to come forward on the outside edge with outward facing upside down stairs nine blocks long. Then turn this way and five upside down stairs facing forward here. Turn this way and fill in this side with nine. That frames in the bottom of the fuel tank. Then on the second layer, we're gonna put two deep slate brick blocks on each outside edge. Then a two by three in the middle. And here, a crimson sign and a crimson button. Same over here, so a crimson button, crimson sign. Then we're gonna fill in the whole rest of this second layer of the fuel tank, five wide, with deep slate brick blocks starting in front of that sign and coming all the way to the front of it here. In front of this, we're gonna put three deep slate brick blocks up the bottom middle with three outward facing upside down stairs on either side of that. Then a three by three of deep slate brick blocks on top of this section. And then on the second layer, a brewing stand, a warp sign, and a player head. Come over here, do the same thing. Brewing stand, warp sign, and a player head. Then we'll come in front of this, skip one block forward, and get another right wheel on each rail with an end rod axle in the middle, then three netherite coming up the middle in front of it. In front of that, another netherite on each rail with an end rod axle. 
Then we're going to put upside down deep slate tile stairs facing this way here and here. Turn around and facing this way here and here. Then a deep slate tile slab on the bottom middle of each side. Then on the sides of the trucks here, we're going to put a player head in front of each wheel. And do the same thing over here. Then next to the player heads on each end, we'll put a grindstone. Come back to this truck and we'll do the same thing. So player heads on the wheels and grindstones next to them. And same thing over here, player heads on the wheels and grindstones next to those player heads. Then we'll come back up front here. Then we're gonna take out dark oak fence gates and open them into the ends of the wheels here and here and also into the ends of the wheels on this side. Then we'll continue filling the top middle three with deep slate brick blocks down the length of the truck, stop above where the fence gates are, and put two more coming off the top middle. On the sides of that, we're gonna put outward facing upside down, deep slate tile stairs on either side. Then in front of that, three deep slate brick blocks coming across. And then one more row of three. So it sticks out two blocks past where those stairs are. Then we'll come underneath the bottom of the front here and we're going to put three temporary blocks across the very bottom of the front. So three here. On the side of it we're going to put a backward facing upside down polish andesite stair. And we can knock out these two temporary blocks. Come around on this side and another backward facing stair on this side knock out the temporary block. Above it. We'll put a polish andesite block on top of each stair and another upside down backward facing polish andesite stair coming off that block, then a polish andesite slab on each side behind it. On top of this, on the third layer up, we're going to put two polished blackstone blocks on each side and then a yellow concrete in the middle. In front of this, we're going to copy the pattern one block down and forward. So yellow concrete in the middle, two polished black stone blocks on either side like that. Then we're going to switch over and we're going to take out polish andesite stairs here. And we're going to come underneath this in an outward facing upside down stair. Then wrap around the corner here. And three blocks of polish andesite and on this side an outward facing upside down polish andesite stair again. Then we're going to come behind this on top on the third layer and fill the top middle three with iron blocks going end to end. Then we're going to come up on the side here in front of the fuel tank starting on the block on top right in front of it and we're going to put a row of polished andesite blocks coming up this third layer all the way up to the front. And we'll do the same thing on this side. So start right here and bring it one block before where the fuel tank is here. Then we're going to switch over and we're going to take out yellow concrete. And starting behind where this row of polished andesite blocks end, we're going to fill the rest of it with yellow concrete here. So start right here and come all the way down this top outside edge till you get to the back of the locomotive. And we'll do the same thing over here. So start right here and bring the yellow concrete all the way forward. Next we're going to come on top of the front end here. In one block back from where the polished blackstone is, we're going to put a polished blackstone on each side of the top and three yellow concrete in the middle. And then another three yellow concrete on top of that in the middle. Then we're going to go in and we're going to take out 
a polished black stone stair. And we're gonna put a stair on each side of this yellow concrete on top facing forward. So it looks like this. Next on this middle layer of polished black stone, we're gonna put a crimson button on each of the outside edges here. And then on the next layer up, a glow item frame on each side with glowstone for the ditch lights. Then we're gonna come up on top of here and we need to go one block up and one block back from the yellow concrete and get three cyan stained glass blocks across the top middle. And then we're gonna turn and on each side of that glass, we're gonna put a forward facing polished blackstone stair here and here. After that, we need to go one block up and one block back with a temporary block, get a forward facing polished blackstone stair, then three oak stairs and another polished blackstone. So it looks like this. Then on the top middle yellow concrete block, we're gonna put a glow item frame with glowstone for the headlight. And underneath it, three yellow concrete, like this. Then we're gonna put a blank birch sign in the center of that yellow concrete. And up here on each side of the oak stairs, we're gonna put a dark oak sign with our locomotive number, which is 101. Then we're gonna hit both those signs with white dye and a glow ink sack. After that, we're gonna swing up underneath this top row here and on each side we're gonna put a white concrete then coming off the white concrete on each side we're gonna put two cyan stained glass panes coming backwards on each side then another white concrete behind the cyan stained glass panes on each side come to the side and on the bottom We'll put a full row of white concrete coming to the back of this section we just made here. And we'll do the same thing over here. So a full row of white concrete. Then on this middle layer, starting at the front, we're gonna do two cyan terracotta, two light gray concrete, and a clay. Copy that pattern over here. So starting at the front, two cyan terracotta, two light gray concrete, and a clay. Then, on the next section behind it, knock out this block, put in a polished andesite stair, then an upside down smooth quartz stair, and an upside down polished andesite stair. And we'll copy this stair pattern on the other side. So knock out this block, a right side up polished andesite stair, upside down smooth quartz, and another polished andesite. And actually we're gonna take the polished andesite stairs off the top, because I'm not liking how it looks. So we're gonna come in and take out regular andesite stairs and also an andesite block. Take out this clay block, put in an andesite block on each side. And then an upside down andesite stair behind it here. And actually I was wrong, we don't even need the andesite stairs. Take the stairs out and put a door on each side. Sorry about that. Then, behind this doorway on each side, on the bottom, we're gonna put a single white concrete. So one here, and one here. Then above the white concrete, we're gonna put an andesite on each side, and then another white concrete on top of the andesite on each side. Then, behind that on the bottom, we're gonna extend a row of four white concrete coming backwards. Same thing over there. Then we're gonna put two yellow concrete powder on each side and a bedrock up in each corner. And actually take out one of these yellow concretes here and we're gonna make a vent. So we're gonna put in a two by three of deep slate tile walls. So it looks like that.
And then over on this other side, we're gonna put another yellow concrete powder and then a white concrete up here next to the bedrock. And actually, I do apologize, I made a mistake again. The vent is supposed to be on the opposite side here. So take out this vent and all these deep slate tile walls. Copy this pattern across to this side. And we'll take out these three blocks and put our vent over on that side. There we go. Next, we're going to take out yellow concrete and put them on each of these three blocks here. And then on bottom behind it, we're going to extend yellow concrete back another four blocks. And then extend it back on that side as well till it meets up. Then, we're going to make this stair stepping pattern on the next two layers up of yellow concrete. So it looks like that. Then we're gonna switch over to white concrete here, and we're gonna put a white concrete on each of these three blocks coming up, still in this stair pattern. So here, here, and here, and same thing over there. Then we'll do another row of white, so each layer of white concrete is two blocks wide. Then we'll fill in this upside down L shape on the top corners of yellow concrete on each side, so it looks like this. Then behind that, on bottom, we're going to come back by three yellow concrete and up another two. Same thing here. And then a two by two of iron bars in this gap here on each side. Then behind this, a column of three iron bars on each side coming up. Behind that, a yellow concrete, an iron bar, and a yellow concrete on top. Then, behind this, two iron bars coming back on each side. Then two yellow concrete above it. And two iron bars on top of that. Same thing over here. So two yellow concrete above here, two iron bars. Then behind it, yellow concrete on bottom of each side, a single iron bar, and yellow concrete above that. Then behind that, a column of three iron bars coming up on each side. Behind that, a column of three yellow concrete on each side. Then we'll do a full row of yellow concrete in a single layer on the bottom, starting one block before the end of the yellow concrete below it. So right here. Do that on both sides. Then in these two corners we'll put a single yellow concrete and a deep slate tile wall above them. At the back we're going to use yellow concrete to come up to the top in a stair stepping pattern so it's all on a diagonal like this. Then we can fill the rest of these gaps in with yellow concrete to the top of it. Same thing over there. On bottom of the back here we're going to put two white concrete on either side. So two here and two here. Then on the next layer, starting at the front, we're going to put an andesite block. So an andesite here and here, then a light gray concrete, and then a cyan terracotta. Then on the top layer, a white concrete at the back then an iron block and two more white concrete in this gap. Same thing here, white concrete, two over here, and iron block over there. Next, come to this rear end here. We're gonna put a door in the center and surround it with cyan terracotta. Next, on bottom of the back, above each of these two fence gates, we're gonna put a polished black stone button on each side. Then on the side, cyan terracotta is a crimson button on each side, and two iron bars on each side of the door here. Then we'll swing around the corner on the back here, put two iron bars here, 
and same thing on this side. Then we'll come up by this front door and we're gonna put a column of iron bars on each side of this door and we're gonna bring it down so it's four blocks tall, so it should stick down like this. Then we'll do the same thing over here. So a column of four on each side of this doorway as well. Then we'll come up top here behind these oak stairs and put three polished black stone blocks. Then on each side of it, a conduit and a crimson button in the middle. Then behind these polished black stone blocks, three polished andesite slabs on the lower hitbox, and then two coming back on this side. Then we'll put four outward facing polished black stone stairs on either side of the top outside edge here. In this gap, we'll put a two by two of polished andesite blocks and a polished black stone button back here in this corner. Then we're gonna take out polished andesite stairs and put a full row of outward facing polished andesite stairs starting right here and going all the way down to the back of the locomotive. So bring it right across these vents and all the way to the back. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. Outward facing polished andesite stairs starting at the back and coming all the way forward until it meets up where the polished blackstone stairs are up here. Then we'll come back up here in the top middle and do a three by three of polished andesite blocks right here. Then on each side at the front of it, we're gonna put two levers going into each other to be antennas. Then behind this section, on the upper hitbox of the second block down, we're going to do a 3x3 three three of polished andesite slabs down there. Then we're going to take out dark oak fence gates to represent where the horn is. Put three across here, three across here. Open these three this way, and the other three this way. Just like that. Then, behind this section, we're going to go back to polish andesite blocks and we're going to do a five by three. Then we're going to put a row of five iron trap doors on each side of that. Then behind that section on the top middle here we'll do a three by three of polish andesite blocks again. Behind that, we're going to do a 7x3 of netherite. So come back by 7 and fill it all in. Then on every single netherite block, we're going to put a stone pressure plate. And this gives us the vent detail up here. Then we're going to put three polished andesite across here. On that other side, two bedrock over there, a 2x2 two two of polished andesite here, and three more polished andesite coming back. Then, a polished black stone button here and here, and here and here. Then we come to this side, put two bedrock on this side, a 2x2 two two of polished andesite, and fill in the rest to the back, three wide with polished andesite. Then we can put a polished black stone button here and here as well. Then we're going to come in here and we're going to take out a gray candle. Put a gray candle on each side of the very back. And then three iron trap doors in that center right there. And now all of our roof detailing is completed. And actually looking at it now here, I'm not liking how I did this front end. It's sticking out a bit too far here. So I think we're going to edit this. So I'm going to take out this whole front row on these two layers. And then this stair, this stair, and these three blocks here. 
In that gap, we'll put a polished black stone, a yellow concrete, and a polished black stone. Then three polished andesite on bottom underneath it, and an upside down outward facing polished andesite stair on either side. Now the front end looks a little bit more proportional here. Now we'll do the interior. So go ahead and come in through this front door. Put three iron blocks underneath the windshield here. And then extend the floor back three wide with iron blocks until it's one block behind the doors. Then in the back here on the middle, we'll put a quartz slab and three quartz slabs up here for the control desk, two glow item frames with end crystals and a lever for the engineer. Then we'll turn around and put a stair on each side for seats. Back here, a blast furnace, two high on each side and a door in the middle. Then here and here we'll put torches to light the cab and we'll come work on our next compartment back here. So we're going to come back here on each side behind these first iron bar vents, put a column of three blocks of iron. Then come through here and behind these vents, put three blocks of iron on either side to separate out her compartments. And then we'll come back up here and work in this compartment. So we'll come back up here. And on each side, up here, we're going to put three quartz brick blocks coming up. And then another column of three on each side behind that. Then three coming backwards across the bottom on both sides. Above that, we're going to put a row of sideways anvils on each side. Then we'll come behind this here, take out this final anvil here, put in a quartz brick block, and then a polished andesite slab above it. Next to it on bottom, an end portal for a toilet, and then a column of three quartz bricks block coming up. Then we're gonna take out a door, turn around this way and put a door over this bathroom, and a quartz brick block to cover the top. Then two more columns of three quartz brick right here to frame it in, a door right here, and a block above the door. Then we'll come back into this compartment because we need to light it. So come in here and we're going to take out an end rod and put an end rod across the top up here. Then we'll come in here and do our prime mover. Skip a block back from the door in the middle and put four sideways anvils up the middle. Then above it, four blocks of redstone with a polished blackstone button on each side of each redstone block. Then above that up here, we're gonna put four hoppers. And there's the prime mover. And then we need to light this compartment. So on each top outside edge, we're gonna do a full row of horizontal head rods. Same thing over here. These charger locomotives are very well lit. Then we'll come back here, put a door right here, and a block above it. That should be a block of iron. Then we'll skip one block back from the door in the middle, and we're going to put four acacia logs and a pattern going vertical and bring it all the way to the ceiling to represent the big air filter. Then, same as before, across each top outside edge of this compartment, we're going to do a full row of horizontal end rods. And now that's complete, and we'll come back through here, put a door here, and a block above it. Then we're going to do a 2x2 two two of smooth stone on each side with two brewing stands on top of them. Then over here we'll put two glow item frames with end crystals in them for computer screens. Then we'll turn around and we're going to come to the back and we're going to make a two by two of iron blocks on each side of the back and brewing stands above those as well. Then we'll do a full row of a single layer of iron blocks on each side in between here and above that 
full row of hoppers on each side. Then for this compartment, we'll come across the top middle with a full row of horizontal end rods down to the back. And now the full interior is done here. And I'm just gonna come back through everything and make sure we can actually fit through and I didn't make any mistakes. So far, so good. And we can fit up these stairs back into the cab, so we're all good to go here. And there we have it, folks. We've completed our Brightline SCB-40 Charger locomotive. I hope you enjoyed the build. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And everyone have a great week. Stay safe out there, rail fans.